Next, we're going to review the right atrium. So as we scan through the right atrium, we can see that the right atrium is composed of two main anatomic components. The first of which is the trabeculated component. We can see as we look at the free margin of the right atrium that we can see little trabeculations. As we scan up and down, you can see those show up as linear opacities that come in and out of the slice that you're looking at. That's the first anatomic region of the right atrium. We can see that there's a second portion of the right atrium uh, that is more posterior that does not have any trabeculations. We can see that there's a thin ridge that acts as a landmark separating the smooth portion of the right atrium from the trabeculated portion of the right atrium. The smooth portion of the right atrium is also known as the sinus venosus, and this ridge that separates these two components is the crista terminalis. The crista terminalis is a ridge that extends from the margin of the junction of the IVC and the right atrium. We can see that little ridge start right there. And it extends up to the junction of the SVC and the right atrium. In some patients, the ridge will be more prominent, like we can see up here at the superior aspect of it. And in some patients, you won't see much of a ridge at all. Kind of like when we go down to the inferior margin here, you really don't see much of a muscular ridge. So it can be very obvious and extend throughout the right atrium, or it can be barely visible at all. But there always will be a separation between the trabeculated component of the right atrium and the smooth sinus venosus component of the right atrium. So we've mentioned already two of the junctions that the right atrium has with other structures, the first of which is the SVC, right atrial junction, that we can appreciate at the superior border and the IVC junction of the right atrium at its inferior border. There's another venous intersection of the right atrium, and that is the coronary sinus, which drains the cardiac veins into the right atrium. And we can see that that sinus is located at the inferior margin of the right atrium. As we go down, we can see on one slice the IVC, the most distal portion of the coronary sinus, and we're starting to see the right atrium proper here. So we have those three venous connections, the SVC, the IVC, and the coronary sinus. And then we have the communication of the right atrium with the right ventricle, which is demarcated by the tricuspid valve. We can sort of make out the tricuspid valve leaflets on this image here. Um, even in a really well cardiac gated CT, you're really not going to see much of the leaflets themselves. They're very thin, wispy structures uh, that don't resolve very well by our current CT technology. Again, if they're associated with thrombus, calcification, that, those are the times that you're really going to see those leaflets really well. So the final structure that's important to be aware of in the right atrium is this extension of the trabeculated component of the right atrium on the right margin of the heart. And this is one of the structures that makes up the right cardiac border on a frontal chest radiograph and this is the right atrial appendage. So the right atrial appendage is a portion of the trabeculated part of the right atrium, and we can see that it kind of wraps partially around the aortic root at its superior margin. And this can be an area where there is relatively lower flow because the blood is coming in uh, through the SVC or the IVC and may not have the nice laminar flow that we like to see in, in normal chambers and vessels. As a result, this slow flow may lead to thrombus formation. So if you're reading a, even a non-gated non cardiac chest CT, you may be able to observe thrombus in the right atrial appendage. Uh, it's not as important to pick up as thrombus in the left atrial appendage because any thrombus that is here will have to go through the capillary filter system of the lungs unless there is a defect in the septum separating the atria. This brings us to another structure of the right atrium. And that is that the right atrium is separated from the left atrium by the interatrial septum. And we see some patients may have thickened septums. If we go back to our first patient, we can see that the septum separating the two chambers is, is relatively thick. You can actually have marked fatty deposition there to make it even more dramatic than this. Um, but there will generally be a portion of the septum that is somewhat thinner. Here we can appreciate the central portion, which is thinner, and it may even present as an indentation into the right atrium or a pouch um, into the left atrium. This is known as the fossa ovalis and is the remnant of the foramen ovale that exists in fetal circulation 
Um, and when patients have a defect there, then that's known as the foramen ovale. So we've reviewed the major structures of the right atrium.